Welcome back to friend or foe, everybody. Week two, day one, and we're headed into game number two of the night. On the blue side, we have Pentakill Teemo, please, and taking them on on the red side is Terracotta Gaming. I'm looking forward to a riveting match in this game as PTP are standing at a solid 2-0, and with TG standing also pretty well at 1-1. One and one. My name is Whirler, and casting along with me today, we have Found. Yeah, it's good to be back for game two. Uh, I'm missing my Doug duo, but Whirler is a fantastic replacement, and I cannot wait to see if PTB can finish, continue their undefeated strength, especially since uh, this is uh, what, like 150% improvement from last season, and every game they win, I'm just I'm in their corner. Absolutely, as we are seeing very, very nice uh, familiar faces in this game uh, on Pentakill Teemo, please. And Terracotta Gaming, I believe, once again, they are a new team in the league. And from what we've seen from them so far, I personally like Terracotta Gaming's team more or less, uh, especially in the bot side with Iron Tower and Oriri. Yeah, I'm extremely hyped to see them play. This is actually my first time going to be watching Terracotta, and, I, and they were one of the teams I was really hyped for because I love name synergy, so thank you Terracotta for putting the TG in your names. Makes you mm -hmm. guys look professional, LCS ready. But other, I, I, I also heard that their bot lane was particularly good, Iron Tower and Aurea, and this is, uh, this is a really good opportunity to see how well they can perform against Les Duvano and Cyberskull, who performed extremely well last week. As the first pick of this game is actually going to be the Rel. How do you feel about Rel in organized play? Okay, so Rel is a is, is probably one of the bigger biggest feast of famine champions in the support role you can have. She has a very good one time snap engage, but after that, her value is it, it depletes because of the way her mount up works, and that she's a sitting duck after that. But I do think she's extremely strong, and she is very good at being a solitary or secondary engage. So the Alistar counter pick has come out. So Terracotta does know their research and on support matchups, and know this is something that people play into Rel quite frequently to disrupt that dash. Definitely so. We'd like to see the aggressive picks in both B1 and R1 picks. I like the support uh, lock-ins. There's a Volibear, though. We can throw that pick one of two different ways, and I'm interested to see where Terracotta think about throwing this one. Yeah, Electric Bear, though, has been mainly picked as a jungler, so I would assume that's going to be the avenue, but yes, this is very important. Flex picks in this meta have been massive. Uh, Zaya is also returning, so I'm glad to see that people are picking it back up. Uh, the buffs that Riot has been giving it consistently is something that is both good and bad because people must people often forget how much of a terror Zaya is when she actually is good because it's very difficult to dive in on her, and her pullback does so much damage, but... Yeah, Zaya is returning, and I think this is actually a relatively strong ring, very safe, very self-sufficient, but has decent engage, and Zaya is one of the best picks into Alistar, so well done on the side of Pentakill Teemo. They are constantly picking these really good compositions, and they're picking strong champions in the meta, with Graviel taking his Cassiopeia, which is another big hyper carry champion. Yeah, absolutely. I actually like seeing uh, Cassiopeia's sort of dominate the fights. Uh, it's such an interesting champion to see DPS. You would never really expect it looking at the champ. And just honestly, in the years that this champ has come with the passive rework and everything, I think she has a, sort of evolved into quite a fine carry champ uh, in Season 11. As Jin, this is a champion that's slowly been coming back into the meta. I've been playing a little bit of Jin myself, and I genuinely like this champion now. Yeah, after the changes that he's gotten and all the buffs to his ultimate, he actually does, he, he's back to doing that long range sniper damage that Riot, Riot intended with him. And with Jin being returning into the meta, this he's very fun to watch. Landing those Ws, those long range CCs is really important. And Iron Tower taking it into this, this matchup is really smart considering this is not gonna be super aggressive in the bot lane with having Zaya been already been locked in. Definitely so. Pentacle Teemo, please, uh, having Mordekaiser and Wukong taken off the table for them. Terracotta Gaming have Yone and Lilia stripped away from them this time around as we head into our second phase of picks. And we're rounding this one out if you are assuming Volibear is the jungle with top lane and mid lane for Terracotta. And Pentakill still needs a jungle and a top lane under their belt. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how they're going to round out their composition. Terracotta is going to take away the Orianna, so a safe mid lane mage, very conventional. She is very good into Cassiopeia because having zone control against a champion that has uh, relatively low range is very effective. So 
Uh, I think both teams are drafting very smartly, getting a kind of a one-two punch in draft where you, if someone takes a mid laner or a support, you try to look for counters, and Terracotta has done that with the Orianna into the Cassiopeia matchup. As well as the Alistair and Durrell, as you did mention, and Amumu, we are playing on the most recent patch of League, 11.17, so this is, in fact, the new and improved Double Q Amumu. I'm excited to see this one played. Yeah, the terror from the jungle is back. She, he, the sad mummy is while he's not often been used since the beginning of the season. I'm sure we all remember where he could like solo Baron with one tank item. Uh, th those days are gone, but I think Riot has moved him in, in a different direction that's been very effective, giving him some more CC and uh, some ability to actually duel enemy junglers. He's one of the. He's actually really strong in early one v ones now. He can kind of use his CC, his CC to get a lot of damage out and get more time for his passive to stack. So. Amumu returning is a lot of CC. This is a lot of teamfight setup. And Amumu has really good uh, synergy with Cassiopeia because his ultimate does provide a magic res a magic res damage shred. Definitely so. And that is not quite an error on your screen. Well, it is an error, but don't fear it too much. Pentacle Teemo, please. And Terracotta Gaming had a drafting error at the end of their draft. On the blue side, te uh, Pentacle, Teemo's side, they have drafted Maokai as their fifth and final pick, and Terracotta Gaming responds to that with a set pick. So with that in mind, how do you feel about these drafts in general, and where do you see it going in this game, and who can win? Yeah, both teams have selected very uh, standard compositions. This is not something that uh, you would be too, that would be too far fetched to see in the LCS or the LPL, so uh, in, in the spirit of that i think that it's going to be very important for these junglers to have an impact cam and pure llama are going to need to find angles into this game and frankly uh whatever jungle finds an early advantage especially on a, this volatile mid and bot lane set matchup will be the will probably put his team in a very good advantage to secure these objectives and make it very difficult to fight all righty i like that and for me looking at these two teams i genuinely want to see uh, Pentacle team up, please take the 3 0 in this game. Having the new Amumu under their belt sort of gives me a little bit of favoritism on their end, but I genuinely believe that their comp uh, is going to pull uh, ahead of Terracotta Gaming in this game as we head into game number two of the night, everybody. And Maokai in the top lane, Welcome run to by so Big Biggest Deacus. <laughs> Uh, Pure Llama on the Amumu, Gravet or Graviel on the Cassiopeia mid, and let's do Vandal and Cyborg Skull running the uh, Zaya and Rel in the bot lane. And whereas on TG's side, we have Aquapair on the set top, Cam on the Volibear, we got Javi on the uh, Oriana, we got Iron, I just said their name, Iron Tower, Iron Tower. and Oriri running the Jin and Alistair. As we head into this game, we got a five point start for each member. Usual starting items on each of them. Let's see what kind of action we can get in this game. Yeah, um, before we get into discussing jungle pathing, where we expect to uh, to see how these teams are going to navigate this early game, can we all just take notice that Let's Do Vanal is a name that we allowed into the league? <laughs> there's, there's, like, there's no way that. I mean, I get, I get the joke, but uh, I, I, I like the like subtlety on that one. I believe this player has been in FOF for quite a while now. If I'm uh, not mistaken, I'm I'm not too sure because I only I only came into FOF season three, so I'm not too sure exactly when uh, the Zaya has started their journey in FOF. But their journey has never ended yet, so they're they're going for wins, and I'm I'm excited to see. Uh, if Pentakill Teemo have improved ever since last season enough to take the playoffs run by storm. As in the top lane, we're looking at just a normal trading pattern. Between a Maokai though, this is a champion you don't see too often in the top lane. You usually see this champion in support recently. And Set getting a nice face breaker on him to even up that trade and pull him ahead even. How do you feel about the Maokai pick this game? Yeah, Maokai is going to be a difficult matchup as big as Negus is going to be in a little bit of trouble. He might actually die to set on the top side. And bot lane's going already. Cyborg Skull forced to flash out of that one as Jen threatens the W on top of him. Not too bad for the side of TG as they are running ahead with this game. 
Yeah, a lot of damage taken and some CS advantage already being opened up in the top side. You have 12 to a 1 as this wave is coming in, so Maokai's going to need to pick up a lot of this if he's wanting wanting to catch up in CS. But uh, it's an interesting all-in to go for that early on in the game for Cyber Skull. Uh, Oriri is going to have the advantage in tankiness in the early game, and Rel's not going to get much advantage from stealing the stats off of Alistar, at least until later on. So uh, that's going to put set them up quite far behind, and if Jin is able to get a free lane, he, his mid-game is just a terror right now. Yes, indeed, and we have an Amumu coming down to the bot lane to see if we can get a gank set up for them. Everyone has their flash on the side of TG. Should be able to get out of this one, even with two bandage tosses, but he could get a summoner out of one of them, as Pure Llama looks like he's going to back up off of this one. A Cyborg Skull is constantly engaged. Late engaged by Amumu, going to hit the bandage toss, but Jin going to pick up first blood on Cyborg Skull. Rel is down, and... Let's do Vano. We got Zaya almost getting caught out there at, towards the end of that fight. Cam in the mid lane looking to even it up at 4TG even more. Not even even it up. As Javi goes for the flash onto Gravio, but it is not in range for the auto attack. And he's going to go down to the tower. So much just happened. Oh no, he canceled his auto attack so that you saw the windup actually began, but it didn't go all the way through. So the flash comes out, the auto attack is canceled, and yeah, the poison was still on him. So that's going to be Gravio picking up a kill. Uh, that is upsetting because uh, they both these mid laners have TP, and getting gold over to Cassio can really make this matchup pretty unplayable for Rihanna if she can't threaten her zone. So uh, yeah, costly mistake from the side of Jovi. Oh my, I cursed it a little bit by saying evened it up when TG was looking like they were going to be 2-0. Unfortunately, Cassiopeia is going to tie that one up. 1-1 one one on each side. Maokai going in for more training on Aqua Parrot. Aqua Parrot not taking it though. The face breaker on Maokai is going to be enough to even that one up. And these are, this, is, this is damage coming up from top laners who have nothing but uh, starting items. Yeah, this is a lot of damage coming out. Maokai is still a sustain bot, though. If you see, even though Set is putting out a lot of damage, and the more Set uses his abilities, the more healing is going to come out from Maokai, and he's extremely hard to push out of lane unless he's going to be dived, which he... Don't get me wrong. He, you can dive him extremely easily if that's going to be the option that uh, team, uh, team yeah, <laughs> that Cam, Cam is going to go for if he's going to look to use that Vala Bear. Definitely so. As in bot lane, we're noticing some pings. Infernal Dragon, first drag of the game, is coming up. It is there. Cam is already on the case as they get some vision down there. And blue team secure themselves a Rift Scuttler for the time being. Mumu, he's headed up in the top lane looking to just clear camps. Nothing too much going on as Cam is going to be starting the Infernal Dragon. That is going to be really good if they can get their hands on it. They have a lot of champions that don't necessarily thrive with Infernal Dragon, but you never mind one, as Cyborg Skull and Graviel are off to the side. Yeah, this first Infernal is going to be extremely important because there's so much value coming up, but Root's going to land a bunch of damage on Graviel. And definitely so. Riri's in the middle of the pack, though. He's looking for a stun, and he's not going to get it just yet, but with Cassio trying to waddle away, is not going to be able to get out in time for Jin to fourth shot her, but Amumu coming up with the advantage toss. Oriri behind him, he's gonna uh, W him backwards. No ulti for the Mumu yet. That would have been perfect setup if he was six. But unfortunately, we're not at that point in the game yet. And they secure themselves another, uh, or they secure themselves a double kill and an Infernal Dragon for themselves, putting Terracotta Gaming insanely ahead. Not insanely, but pretty well ahead for six minutes in the game. Yeah, absolutely. That was a really good execution on the side of Terracotta, making sure their teleports were available and Set could join. You saw both top laners recalled before the Dragon to make sure they were going to come out with as many items as possible. But on the side of PTB, you have to be concerned. That was a communication error or some form of a processing error because of the, Amumu was on top side doing his gromp. There's no way you're going to be able to contest the Dragon in that position. So yeah, kind of just gave over some freebies in, in addition to losing the objective, and they're going to need to clean that up if they're going to look to come back into this game because they're already a, quite far behind in terms of map pressure. Definitely so. Aquapair is not monitoring it too much, getting two assists out of that, getting a pickaxe for himself, and they're already back in the top lane, but Maokai is just bullying Aquapair in terms of HP. Look at these trades on him. He flashes forward, gets the settle, and the Haymaker, forcing Maokai's ult out of there. Does root the jungler, funny enough, and that's going to call off the gank for that. Very good start to the fight from Aquapair. 
But Maokai is not going to have it, and he's going to walk himself out of that one alive. Yeah, the Flash wasn't even for so very uh, good patience on Biggest Sneaks, knowing he wasn't in lethal threat range. You saw how much damage Set put out with his combo, but after that, there's not much reprisal, so he's just going to be able to sustain back up, and every second Maokai makes it through lane here and not is heavily punished is going to be a big advantage if he doesn't get solo killed right here. And it looks like he might just get solo killed as it's going to be enough. The Haymaker last second comes out to give him the shield against that sapling. He's not going down. He's taking the paycheck in the top lane as he gets some platings for himself. Yeah, absolutely. That was really, really costly on the side of Big Sneakers and kind of unnecessary. You're trading it when, you're, when the wave is already going to be shoving into your tower. You know you're going to you want to catch that big wave. And even though he's going to be able to have teleport to kind of compensate for it, that that's that's quite punishing because there's already a quite large CS lead coming out from the side of Aquapen. As Cam coming in the mid lane, no minions to really threaten this tower, but it does back Cassio off just a little bit. Cyborg Skull taking a beating in this bot lane so far as Jin recalls to pick up what I would assume is more components for the Gale Force coming in. Yep, there's the Noon Quiver. And Zaya looks like he's falling through. The Flash Bandage Toss on top of Javi. Javi's not going to be able to get out of that one. Not even getting out of the Miasma to be able to flash himself out. Very well played by both Graviol and Pure Llama. Setting up that layer of CC to prevent Javi from escaping. Yeah, very well done. Perfect CC layering, not making sure to use a bunch of CC back to back. The Cassio ultimate was also was saved, so they could look to do that again. And, and when Amumu's ultimate is back up, but really, yeah, really well done to find a pick there. And this Cassio is going to be a big threat. So any more gold going into the snake's pockets could be a, a big, a lot of trouble from the side of TG if they continue to allow her to scale. Absolutely, we got the we got a is that. Well, is that Oriri in the top lane? We got to we got to support Rome all the way up to top lane for this Maokai. The tree is in a little bit of trouble as the threat of the gank is no more. He's just getting some vision in the river, clearing it as such. Very good of Oriri to get some Rome pressure going around as Maokai is still taking a beating in trades. Down 37 CS so far. Yeah, this is that wasn't quite punishing Rome though, because Iron Tower was forced to flash into that bot side. He face checked the rail, and that, and basically it was an instant flash away. So, uh, you do got to make sure when you're roaming, you're watching the wave of your AD carry, so they don't be punished, because uh, uh, that three v three can easily dive a gen. And now he's going to be in a little bit of trouble as Oriri still on this roaming mission to secure this Rift Herald. So they're going to need to get a lot of uh, advantage out of this because they're kind of losing it in the bot side. Yes, indeed. Jin still holding that shut uh, shut down proudly, though, as he is slowly losing his CS lead. Still two kills ahead on the Zaya. Not too riveting for him just yet. He is still ahead by a decent margin, I would say. But he is up a pickaxe in damage. And goodness, Aqua Pair is going for more as Maokai is taken down to half in one trade. Mamumu! getting a good bandage toss on a Javi. Javi forced to walk out of that one. Nothing too much is going to happen after that. And Aquapair's doing a disrespectful recall in front of him as Pure Llama is facing, uh, is facing the heat as Cam comes out of the bush and is ready to fight this one. Amumu gets stunned up by the Alistair and it's not going to be enough as they do trade junglers in this case. Cassio pumping out damage as Mumu is getting uh, stunned up, but it's not going to be enough. Oriri getting the nice knock up onto Graviol, but Graviol is not having it either. As Javi is forced to flash out of his damage, he gets out alive, but that was very close to Graviol getting another kill for himself. Three and one so far. Where, meanwhile, in the bot lane, Iron Tower and Let's Do Vanal doing some massive amounts of 1v1. That was really close, but the Q from Zaya comes out last second to secure that for him. Iron Towel gives over the shutdown to Zaya, and that is going to be huge for her. Yeah, unfortunately, Iron Tower canceled two auto attacks that could have given him the win because that fourth shot was easily have taken down the Zaya. But yeah, just uh, some, uh, some small mechanical errors on that part. But on the positive, Gravio is playing a really well done game. This Cassio is a terror, putting out as much damage as he did. He basically 1v3 that last fight, so I don't know what you can ask for other than that. I would say so, as Maokai is set pushing down four plating so far. That's a lot of gold for a set. With 40 CS up as well, Cyborg Skull is alone in the river, 
and it is not going to be enough uh, to really start anything. She is not going to be able to get out. No, the ulti is going to be burned, and she is going to be going down. Aquapair taking a beating to the tree. You hit a tree, you get hit back harder, I guess, as the sapling comes out to chase him. Not going to get the slow on him. And Maokai, despite being behind in gold by a huge margin, is definitely not falling behind in terms of damage against Aquapair. And the second dragon of the game for the ocean to make it a mountain soul does go over to Terracotta Gaming. To give them the second dragon of the game. Yeah, Aquapair, he he's he's kind of he's kind of overstaying in lane a little bit. Hasn't been able to find his avenue to take a recall because it's definitely when he bases, he has his his uh, his item completed, his mythic. So uh, even though biggest needs these trades are close at the moment, they will not be whenever uh, Set does take that recall. And Javi headed up to the bot lane. Cyborg Skull a little too far ahead again as uh, Cyborg Skull goes to get that. Pink Ward in the bottom river, and let me just say, Terracotta Gaming have this river lit up very well with Control Wards, as Graviel is going to take the L to Javi on that one as Cam gets on the stun, and Cyborg Skull is going to give one over to Iron Tower as she goes too far ahead, trying to get the Zaya out in time, but will Zaya be able to make it? Meanwhile, in the top lane, there's a gank from the Amumu, Aquapair is taken very low, but he gets the kill onto the Maokai, but trades it over to Amumu. That's huge for the 1v2. Whereas in the bot lane, there's a lot going on. You want to take this away, Found? Yeah, the so the Flash is going to come out for Aquapair. He does get the good ultimate back into the tower. He's going to be able to drop the Maokai. The ultimate from the Amumu wasn't able to come out and prevent the Flash. And frankly, these, these are just fighting across the map. And uh, it seems like TG is getting the advantage in basically every one of them. And their laners are performing extremely well. And when your jungler is going to a lane that's 40 CS down, you always got to be concerned about the turn, especially someone who has a much turnaround damage in the second half. And four platings go over to three members here on the bot lane. Iron Tower, Javi, and Cam really sucking up that gold as well as they can, and they're going to be able to get this tower on this push. Yeah, really well done. Terracotta has been using their objective control. 4,000 gold already at four, uh, four minute, 14 minutes. And Gravio has been the big star of the show for so far for PTV, and he's kind of now getting outgolded by uh, Jovi, who is man after that mistake from an early game, has managed to clean up quite a bit, picking up four kills and having a shutdown of his own. So they're going to need to get Gravio involved because he's basically the only one who does damage at the moment. Definitely so. Set in the top lane, doing very well for himself. Still 40 CS up and a bunch of platings. Did get ganked, set back just a little bit, but he's still kicking it in the bot lane. As Cyborg Skull going for another one of those control wards. It hasn't ended too well for Cyborg Skull, to be fair. And he's going to go down again to Aqua Pair this time around. Jovi in the top lane, going to pick up that top CS. Aqua Pair wants more. He just wants his control ward and get out, probably. But well, goodness gracious, three and one on the set this game. Uh, yeah, this is a nightmare when set is this far ahead. Uh, it's interesting, definitely interesting decision from Cyber Skull to choose to dash in, it's knowing that they probably weren't going to have enough damage to take down the set. So he, him giving his life over there, it may, maybe felt like he was dead anyway. He's already was zero and three at the time, so that's not that much gold given over to Aqua Pair on the reverse end. But yeah, Aqua Pair is having a really good game, dominating in the top line, and he's just being a terror, constantly getting into the enemy space. Definitely so. On Pure Llama this time around, Pure Llama taken very low, but Zaya off to the corner is not going to be enough to stop him whatsoever as the ulti gets onto a Mumu and that's going to take him down. But Zaya is able to take up the red the, or against the set, is able to get it, does have ulti, is not going to use it, busts out the heal. I think you need to ulti, my friend, and that's a little late because red buff is going to take him down. In the top lane, however, Cyborg Skull is going on to Iron Tower to get a stun on him. But the crit is going to be enough to take him very low, and Cam's going to pick that up for himself, whereas Graviel got caught out, and Ariri is going to be able to take him out as well. Maokai is not going to be able to run too far from this one as uh, Volibear getting the ulti onto the tower, and the Maokai is going to be enough to take it down. That's three for zero, and that's going to be a Rift Herald in Terracotta Gaming's pocket. Yeah, absolutely, and the game had been relatively close up until this point, but we've kind of reached terminal velocity, uh, where it, it the descent from PTB has been quick and swift as TG has won multiple fights in a row, collecting up objectives, 7,000 on the gold lead already. Uh, this is 
this is very difficult to come back from and set being so strong making these team fights as un difficult as they're expected to be already having two dragons to their name also so 30 seconds for this next dragon with mountain being being the soul for this game this is something you cannot get over and it's going to be very interesting to see if ptp is going to opt to contest or look to find some gold on this top side and having champions like Set, Volibear, and Alistair on your team, I would be shaking in my boots if they are two dragons away from getting a Mountain Soul. Two, uh, two Mountain Drakes alone for those three champions is exceptional, and just having that shield, they're going to be insanely hard to kill, especially with the 5 and one set. Uh, he is going for, I believe that is an Abyssal next? Or am I wrong? Uh, it could be an Abyssal. I mean, it could also be a Wit's End, and maybe he's just sitting on that giant spell because he's going to go for Umbral after. But uh, mm. this fight setup is already going to be in the advantage. Everyone from the side of PTB is here, so TG is going to need to look to find an angle. Aqua player is just kind of zoning out and just walking up. No one's willing to contest onto him as Oriri is going to be the one who's going to go first. Oriri knocking him out the pit, but it's not going to be enough. Pure Lama missing the smite, and Cam's going to secure that for himself. Aqua player taking people to the back as they're going to be punching him along there. But Rel's going to be going down over on the other side, and Maokai is soon going to follow as they're now going to chase him down the river, and Pure Llama getting stunned up and taken out by Aquapair, and they're chasing them down the jungle as Alistair takes it to the mid lane. Jin getting a nice snipe on Let's Do Vandal. Zaya going to be going down, and that's going to be four for none. And a dragon going over to Terracotta Gaming. Graviel trying to teleport out of there, but he's not going to get that off in time as Cam gets the stun and the kill solo for himself. Make that a five to one for Terracotta Gaming. Yeah, absolutely. Big fight for the side of Terracotta. Getting five kills, collecting up the dragon, also getting this mid tower, so that's going to put them on soul point. A five minutes timer, this is going to be an extremely early soul coming in at 23 minutes. So well, all this gold is coming over to Terracotta as they're now going to be grabbing up two of these mid lane uh, tier two towers that are where so much of the gold has been moved into. Uh, yeah, this is, this is getting rough really fast, and all these champions are going to be accelerating to a point that's going to be unnatural and... Basically unreal. These they're probably gonna all base and complete an item. Absolutely. We got the last whisper on the gin. That's going into a Lord Doms for sure. And that is going to be insane versus a champ like Maokai and a Mumu. If they haven't done enough damage to them already, they're gonna be doing even more. And honestly, as soon as this Oriana gets the Zanyas that she has just purchased, that is going to be insane for team fights. I think that champion alone can control a team fight uh, w with having Zanyas. But having a front line such as Set, Volley, and Alistair, they are coasting through this game. And it is going to be an Abyssal for the set. Yeah, so interesting decision for the Abyssal. It does give magic resist and it uh, amplifies your damage if you're in a certain amount of range. So uh, it's an item that we don't see very often. I'm honestly not too up to date on exactly what it does, so I'm not going to comment too far. But uh, it, if Graviel is the main target and you want some magic resist, that is definitely an option. It's less aggressive than the Wit's End, and that's probably the, the, sort, the choice he was trying to make. An Abyssal Mask confirming... It uh, increases damage output by 15% on an, or as after a champion gets immobilized. And that is pretty good for their team. I would say probably uh, immobilization uh, counts as snares, aka Jin W, uh, stuns, knockups, and I believe silences and suppresses. I don't know about silences too much. Silences used to count as RTC. I don't know if it does anymore. We have a river fight looking like it's going to start. Uh, I don't think they're going to engage on it, but they were, they were, they were looking pretty threatening as Aqua Pair, as they are messing around in mid lane, is getting a bot lane inhibitor tower and potentially an inhibitor for himself. Does have the TP up, is able to respond to any fights that happen. Mid lane is going to get pressured by Pentacle Teemo, but it is not going to subside anything set is just going to keep going in the base no one's recalling for him just yet cyborg going to base but who is that going to stop as they are engaging onto the mid lane and graviel and maokai go down instantaneously let's do vanal taking the l next as llama going in for the suicide play to hopefully stop them as fast as they can cyborg Waiting under the tower, four dead on the side of Pentacle Teemo, please. It is not going to be enough to stop them. And they're going for a second inhib and potentially the end as they are going to ignore this tower. 
they see the end and they are more than welcome to it. A cyborg skull and aqua pair have a standoff dance party with themselves. Ladies and gentlemen, Terracotta Gaming has displayed a wonderful performance in this game. Aqua pair gonna go down and give up a shutdown to the tree. It's not gonna be enough to stop anything as Cam is distracting them long enough to hit this Nexus and take the game for themselves. Two more hits on the Nexus. That's an immovable ult to hopefully stop it. Javi is going to be taken down by the Cassiopeia, but the Alistair did save the day, and that's the auto attack they needed to win. Terracotta Gaming take game two of the night. Yeah, absolutely. 22 minutes on the clock. Extremely fast game. They managed to execute their win conditions very well. They played their mid game very clean. Even though the lanes uh, were quite were neutralized for the early game, Aquapair just managed to show that he that he's a top laner to watch and someone to look into as we continue to move forward. But yeah, Terracotta played an excellent game. There's not much to say other than uh, they just did they just played better than PTB today. And this is this is this is a really scary win for the rest of the league. Definitely so set, pumping out the damage that game and really showing it top in the damage charts of this game. Uh, Javi following not too far behind, as well as Iron Tower. They all did exceptionally well in this game. And I am excited to see where Terracotta Gaming go in this, uh, in this season as we are wrapping up game number two of the night. Make sure to vote for your MVP of the game. And stay tuned because in just a few minutes, we will be getting an interview with our winners. Don't go anywhere. We will see you guys very soon.
Hello folks, Chris Edgeworth here with our second interview tonight. I am joined by the victorious Aqua Pair, fresh off that game, and a big win for Terracotta Gaming. Uh, Aqua Pair, uh, I was hoping you could start us off with a little bit of insights about your team's draft. Uh, you were on the set in this matchup, uh, so what were your thoughts on the draft that your team was able to put together and uh, what you were up against? I don't really know a lot about drafting, but I trust Pajeki with it because he's our coach and all. I like the set pick. He, he said he was going to put me on Orn, but last time I did Orn, it wasn't really good. Also, I don't really find Orn as fun, which means yeah, he let me play set. And I, I like playing set, especially into champions like Maokai, because, you know, I can extend the trades. He doesn't really have any escape, and he can't really use his W when he dies. And, I like uh, the champion. Yeah, he is an exceptionally fun champion. And on, on that same note, um, I was hoping because it was, it was really just a pop-off game. There's not a, a ton to analyze there. Graviel did put up a good fight. We do want to, I want to tip my hat uh, to Graviel's play a little bit there in the, the early game to make it look like uh, there was, was some fight in them, but it, it was, it was a little, uh, he was the Cass. Oh. Cass yeah, the Cassio. Um, so anyway, I was hoping uh, you might be able to give me some insight though on uh, the spicy uh, abyssal mask. Um, the our oh. casters were unfamiliar with the the pick on on set. Uh, can you talk to us a little bit about that tech? Abyssal mask is a really good item. I think it's really underrated because um, usually when I play set and I'm inting a lot or when I feel like I'm snowballing, either way, I get abyssal mask because I don't think spirit massage is that good. Your W shield doesn't really. I don't really think it increases it. Well, I, mean, I mean, even if it does, your W shield runs out in a second, so it's kind of useless. And since I was split pushing the majority of the game, I was usually just going to 1v1 somebody. So if I get my E on them, they take 15% more damage. I think it's a really good ability. No, a really good item. I get it on my second most played, which is Aatrox, because he has a lot of CC. Except that's harder to decide because he has a lot of healing. But I got a Bissell Mask because it, it's magic resist and they have a lot of AP. Yeah, I, I, I like your, your thought process for sure on uh, why, why you're picking it up there in the side lane. I think that makes a lot of sense. I mostly Plus, got it because of splitting. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, the 15, that was one thing that they were pointing out on the on the desk. You know, this is an item that has changed a lot over the course of the history of League of Legends, whereas before it was an aura. Now it's discreetly only when you can proc the immobilize. Do the, I mean, it's 15% increased damage, I believe, from all sources, but it is only proc when you hit those things. So when you're in the side lane, it's, like, it's, it's only like you. Attack. Even even like minion damage is increased because it doesn't say you do 15% more damage, they take more damage. So I think of it as like it deletes their armor or their magic resist. So everything they take does more damage. Exactly. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm a, I'm a convert. You've got me. Uh, you've got me in the church of uh, abyssal mask. At least uh, something we should be looking a little bit more sternly at, and something people get a lot. I feel like the hive mind of the uh, mathematical set, so to speak. Uh, we need to dispel it a little bit. It's a great build. It's it's flashy, but you know there are there are considerations. I don't think that's a good build at all. Building full damage on sets really bad because uh, in team fights, if you build a bunch of health, you're really tanky, and your W can do like 2,000 true damage, and that's you don't really need damage. You're all, also good if you ult the tanks. In one of the river fights near Drake, I ulted a Mumu, and I did a good amount of damage to their ADC um, because my ult does damage based on their HP. So if I ult like a Cho'Gath, then I do more damage without having to build damage. Yeah. So usually we just build full tank every time. Nice. Um, Aqua Pair, thanks so much for giving us all these insights, uh, especially on the set matchup and your thoughts on these itemization. Uh, before we step away, uh, do you have any final thoughts you'd like to leave with us? Any banter for the for any others or any uh, shout outs you'd like to leave with us? Oh, well, Pajeki told me to say coach difference, which is pretty funny because their draft was, uh, I think their draft was good, but I don't know about the Monkai top lane. I don't think he's a good top laner anymore. I don't think he can fit in top lane as well as the other ones. Yeah, he just, well, he had the victorious Maokai skin, so it was, it was probably mostly was a cool one. Yeah. I don't have any victorious because I started drinking season nine. Respect, respect the skin pick. Well, awesome. Uh, thanks so much for joining us, Aqua Pair, for this interview. Congratulations to Terracotta Gaming for another win. And uh, folks, uh, don't go anywhere. We're going to take a short break and we'll be back with our final game of the night. So don't go away.
願言大魔王術中しを得たのが翌日。制限の使用機追放から11ヶ月素手で野良犬の相手に表遠くは持ちいない。